Welcome to the second part of the tutorial. This section covers everything in the wild of a township tale. How to survive, how to get materials and bring them back to town. The first part covers everything in town. Any updated information, including quest compatibility, will be in the pinned comment. Timestamps for all sections will be in the description. The wooded valley is where you will want to go in order to get wood across the sandstone bridge and through this open field and across another bridge. This first small stretch has some trees and is out of the way of enemies. Going further out, you will need to fight the Groteras. The only variant of Grotera you will find in the Wooded Valley is the Oak version, which is the easiest to take down. I do not recommend trying to kill them with a flint hatchet, as flint does close to no damage and will take a very long while. It is recommended you have at least a copper axe before attempting to fight these guys alone. Groteras have three attacks. Turret mode, where they can shoot projectiles, a vine stomp, which shoots a vine through the ground, and a spore attack, which will stun you, making you move slower. Since their main attack is turret mode, the use of shields against Groteras can prove useful. Killing Groteras drops wood wedges and Grotera spores. The spores can be used as a stun grenade of sorts, and is also needed to kill phantoms. While on the topic of phantoms, they can spawn around the map where enemies do, but only at night. Since you are new, it is probably best just to run away from them if you see one. You can fight them later if you really want to. Bonus fact. Heart fruit spawn all around the world. If you find any, you can either grab and pull or hit with a weapon. Once you do either, you will see a bunch of particles go into you. Now your health is permanently increased by one. Collect more to increase your health further. You start with eight health and the maximum you can have is 20. In order to get to the valley, you can run up these stairs and it should be right there. If the stairs are not built, you can run around in the wooded valley really fast and you should be fine. Walking through the water will slow you down. I recommend teleporting over the lily pads to keep a good speed. Around this hill bump, you can find plants growing here. These plants can be used in making stews. There's also a chest up here. Once you get to the valley, you will see the Hebios camps. These camps have a bunch of loot you can take, but the main thing you will want to grab is a gourd which can be dropped from breakable boxes that can spawn in chests. A gourd is used to hold two charges of any liquid, which makes it generally better than a flask. You can also find such valuables like Hebios arrows, these Hebios throwing dagger thingies, and broken Hebios pieces. Throwing daggers can be used to cut spriggle meat, and Hebios arrows are not as bad as rusty arrows. If you find both katana or wakasashi pieces, you can put them together in the crafting house and put them in your vault to save for later. You can sell them to other players for a profit if you want to. Make sure you check all the camps before leaving. You can find pumpkins growing by this map over here, or up the hill by the other map, if no one planted any in town. Once you raid the first camp, go up the hill to the right to the next. Then go to the one in the middle. Scurry down to the one in the crevice. Finally, perambulate yourself over to the final Hebios camp to the northern end of the valley. Remember to break all of the boxes and check all of the chests. The boxes respawn often, and the chests refill after a little while. I recommend coming back here often, especially if you do not find a gourd. If you did find a gourd, this next area will be where you want to head next. Going up the hill over here, you will enter the Dust Bowl. This is where you go to get juice for your recall potion. 
Some low tier loot spawns here as well, along with tropical trees. Worms spawn in this area, so be careful. Worms have two attacks, spitting acid and using their claws to slash people standing close. Both attacks are relatively easy to dodge as long as you are paying attention. Worms have a rare chance to drop green leather. It looks really nice and is the lightest leather in the game. You do not need to fight them. Run past them and through this hole. If the hole is blocked by black rocks, you can just blow up the rocks with dynamite, fireworks, or a turabata shard. Go up these stairs. Across this rock bridge, you can find another chest. Very often, these stairs will not be built. You can easily go around these stairs two ways, so most players can't justify the cost in building them. Go up from the right by standing on this rock and teleporting up, and then going these stairs. You can also take the cooler left route up these rocks. This route is useful if you are really heavy and can't use the other way. A few more teleports and you'll get to the next ledge. There are two chests here, along with a map. Grab anything you need. There are two other chests you can access from here. Fall down here, and walk across this path to get the one. Then fall down here to access the other. Fall on this lip, so you dampen the fall damage. then you can walk back up the stairs. These platforms require you to teleport up them. Continue up the stairs around the loop and towards these floating crystals. The seventh chest in the dust bowl is up here. More importantly, there should be a crate with purple liquid in it. This is recall potion or teleport juice. Make sure your flask or gourd is open then dunk it into the liquid. Recall Potion, when drunk, teleports the player to the respawn structure just outside of town. If you are down in the mines or deep in the forest, or anywhere where you don't really want to be, take a swig of recall and you will pop back into town. Remember to pour into your eyes, since that is where your character's mouth is. To leave, you can walk back the way you came, or you can slide down the hill. Be careful though. The mountain pass is over to the left of Town Hall. Cross the bridge to get to it. If the bridge is not built, you will need to either build it yourself or wait for other players to build it. Over to the right here is the skill shrine. You can see your progress on all skills here. The circle shows experience. Fill it up to get a skill point, which is symbolized as this line. There are two paths from here. If you want to get to the top fast, go straight. But if you want to hit all the loot spots, go to the right. You can look at the map to help memorize the maze, because this is a maze, kind of. When looting the mountain pass, there are certain things you can find here. In chests, you can find things like rock salt, copper tool heads and attachments, lanterns, leather rolls, iron hilts or handles, buckets, and cauldrons. When breaking pots or crates, you can find rocks, flint, cooked meat, copper hilts, flasks with recall potion in them, leather rolls, leather straps, and buckles. Different colors of leather rolls spawn here and work the same in crafting, but they do weigh a little more than the tan variant. They can make your bag look cooler if you want. When looting, remember worms spawn here, and so do phantoms at night. This is the looting path that I take. Go to the right and over this log. Check the chest in the cave in case it has anything. Continue back down this way. Here is the first loot spot. Break all the vases and crates and grab what you need. Extra reminder that if you do not have a real weapon, i.e. not a flint on a stick, you will want to just run past and around worms, as they are not worth the time spent killing them, especially with the extremely poor damage that the flint hatchet deals. 
Go to the left and walk across the wood steps, over the log and pond. Find the rocky path, then go to the left and left again. Up this hill will be a chest and another loot spot. Grab what you need and then turn back to the rock path. Keep going straight until you see these trees. Follow up the ramp, there will be a chest at the top. Over here are a few rusty tools. Continue along for a bit until you see this map, then continue along again. Finally, you will reach the last loot spot. If you continue up, there is the warrior shrine. Across the bridge to the left is another chest. Fall down right here, next to the tree left of the shrine, and you will find the first looting spot again. Loot spots, specifically the crates and vases, will respawn when you walk far away enough. But the chest's restock timer is pretty long, so you don't need to check the chests again. Repeat going around the three loot spots over and over until you have the resources you need. If someone else is looting the mountain pass at the same time as you, you might not give enough space for the loot to respawn so it would best if you just followed in a group instead of walking separately. To leave the mountain pass, you can use recall potion, or just walk back. From the first loot location, follow the wall on the left. From the second loot location, follow the wall on the right. The quarry, or the rocklands, is a good place to get copper, stone, coal, and dry grass. Since the mine is a scary place, this is a much safer way to collect these low-tier materials. From the entrance of the mine, walk up the trail to the right. You'll find it here. You can find ore deposits of coal and copper. You can also find turabatas here, so be careful. The path up to the left doesn't have turabatas. Remember, pickaxes do more damage to turabatas and the extra range from longer handles can prove useful in avoiding their attacks. The best way to fight them is with Air Slash, since you don't even need to get into their range to kill them. Turobotas can only damage players by punching them or self-destructing. They can also heal themselves when they sit down, but be careful. When they sit down, they can either heal or self-destruct. You will know if they are healing by seeing a green circle. There are different types of Turobotas, small stone, big stone, copper, gold, iron, silver, and mithril. Run around in this starting area to mine coal and copper. Killing the stone turabatas here can also give you gold and iron, which is a slow but safer way than getting it in the mines. Gold is a more common drop than iron. You will barely get any iron from killing stone turabatas in the quarry. On the other hand, Running through here and collecting the gold may yield enough to make a golden hammer. You can also simply mint the gold coins if you feel so. If you do plan on getting some gold this way, using Air Slash is the easiest and safest way of killing these guys. If you continue down this path, you will find more Turabatas. And a chest. It's a walk. But once you get to it, you will find the small forest. The small forest is different from the wooded valley, since it spawns dice and groteras just like the real forest, but it is much, much smaller. This may be a good place to practice hunting dice. Just like the real forest, the small forest randomizes every wipe. There is a path forward from the small forest, but we will explore that path later. The mine is one of the two certified scary zones. If you die here, it will be hard to find your stuff again, especially on the lower levels. I highly recommend going down with someone else or in a party. This way, more people can help fight the enemies down here. If you die, someone else can grab your bag and teleport back with it. I'll be going down alone for tutorial reasons, but please go in a party for your first time. You can enter the mines with just a simple torch, but I recommend you go in with a lantern and maybe a spotlight fueled with coal. 
You can fill up on coal in the quarry and refuel while in the mines in case you need to. And, of course, bring a recall potion. However, you can find some in the structures if you are lucky. To enter the mines, walk into the opening and follow the tunnel. Down these wooden stairs and then down these rock stairs. The mines are extremely dark and it is hard to see far in front of you. If you run out of fuel in your lantern, or when your torch goes out, which it will, and you don't have any flint to relight it, stand in the darkness for a little bit. These guys, called firebugs, will spawn. While they can act as a light source, what you are supposed to do is grab and kill them while holding them above your torch. This will relight it. Along the walls in the dark, ore will spawn. Mine ores with your pickaxe and pick them up. Scattered around will be structures with boxes and chests, which hold loot like tool heads, molds, leather rolls, coins, buckets, cauldrons, and recall potions. You may also find crates and geodes, which can be dug up with shovels. You can open geodes with a chisel. Remember that the mines are procedurally generated and will randomize after the server world wipe or a mine wipe down in the first level, no enemies will spawn. The first few levels are often picked to dry of useful ores and loot, so going through them quickly may be a good idea if you want to maximize loot and minimize time. Down on layer 2, enemies will start spawning. Turabatas and worms are common in the mines. Expect to run into them often. It is recommended you to not actively fight them, just running past them is a really good strategy. Just keep moving and you should be fine. Turabatas and worms will also infight. Sometimes, Turabatas will prioritize attacking worms over players, so use this to your advantage. Continue down the holes to get to the next layers. There is no exact science to finding the next hole down. It is really all down to luck and exploration. The spotlight helps with locating them. Sometimes, other players can place a crystal shard on a stake and help point out where the next hole is. If you think you see one of these in the distance, go to it. Please do not take these torches, as it helps everyone find the next layer entrance. If you really need the crystal shards, get them yourself. When you get far enough, around layer 10, you will find a crystal layer. Crystal layers will be lit up with crystals, making it easier to navigate. If you find any, you can break these blue crystals to get crystal gems and shards, which can be used in the televator, which we will talk about later. You can break crystals again to get crystal shards, but unless you really need them, breaking crystals is not recommended. You can also find crystal tools by breaking large blue crystal formations. A pickaxe, a one-handed, and two-handed sword. These do good damage, but have less than stellar durability. For some reason, getting crystals with a melee weapon will break them faster than using a pickaxe, so make sure you do that. One danger of the crystal levels is that you will be low enough to find crystal worms. Crystal worms are the same as normal worms, except their attacks do more damage. Fear these guys. If you go far down enough to reach level 15 or 20, iron ore will start to spawn. Remember, to mine iron, you will need at least a copper pickaxe. Gold also spawns around here, a little higher up though. Collect gold if you want to press it into coins or make a golden hammer. At layer 21, you will encounter a scary looking door. Opening this door gives you access to the first combat trial. You do not need to trouble yourself with this as of now. Continue down further and further for more ore. Remember, the longer you spend in the mines, the more likely you are to die. Don't push your luck more than you need to. Around level 40, you will start finding silver. You will need at least an iron pickaxe to mine this. After layer 60, you can find mithril. You will need a silver pickaxe to mine mithril. Down here, you will encounter Mithril Turabatas, which are the strongest enemy in the game as of writing, so stay away from these guys, as the trouble and risk of killing them in the mines is not worth it. Special reminder that weight is a thing in this game. 
and carrying too much can make you move slower. If you move slower, it'll be harder to avoid attacks from worms and run away from Turabatas. Keep an eye on your weight. Once you have enough ore, it is time to go home and cash in for the day. Stay too long while heavy, and you may find yourself losing everything. You can use the scale in the crafting house to check how much items or your bag weighs. If you have collected crystals, you can use them in the televator. You can reach the televator by going up the route to the right of the mine. Once the televator is built, you can use crystals in order to teleport yourself down into the mines. There's more than a hundred layers in the mine, and rare minerals like silver and mithril spawn in very deep levels, and walking from layer 1 to layer 60 will take a very long time, and is not recommended by most. Using the televator is a much faster way of getting down there quicker. In order to use the televator, you need the layer you are teleporting to, plus 5. Each section indicates 10 layers. You will teleport to the blue highlighted layer. You also need to make sure the individual teleport ruin is built. You can build it with stone and crystals. If the ruin in the mine is not built, you will not be able to teleport to that layer. You can build it from inside the mines with stone and crystal. If you find one of these ruins in the mines, you can also hold your hand on it and teleport back to the surface for free. Remember that before you teleport down, you should light your lantern, as once you teleport down, you will be in complete darkness and enemies will start attacking you. The forest is the other certified scary zone. The forest is randomly generated, just like the mine, and will regenerate on every server wipe. Just like the mines, it is recommended you go to the forest with a party for your first time. The forest does not give you recall potions, so it is important that you bring one, or have fun trying to navigate out yourself. Make sure you bring an axe, as you will need it to cut down trees and fight the Groteras here. Remember, axes do extra damage to Groteras. I also recommend bringing a bow with a few arrows. The reason being is because of the flowers. The death flowers, pink flowers, death ferns, whatever you call them, are a menace to society. Standing next to a pink flower with a little green antennae will make the flower feel the need to excrete its giant cloud of poisonous gas, which will deal poison damage. If the flower does not have green antennae, then you will also have the added hand of stabbing players with spiked vines along with the poisonous cloud, and possibly lingering poison after you leave the cloud. If you find a flower that has green stems and decide not to kill it, it may later grow up into a giant death fern. Goody! Giant ferns have a much larger activation radius. Stay as far from these guys as possible. Just make sure you watch where you are walking and you should be fine. You can kill flowers with a melee weapon, but it will let out some poisonous gas anyways, so you risk dying from doing this. Alternatively, you could shoot the flower with a bow and stand far back to keep your health. This is how I recommend dealing with them. If you have air slash, even better. A common reason for entering the forest is to get wood. If you find oak, just ignore it. Oak can be easily obtained from the wooded valley and even the dust bowl. You don't need to spend inventory space hauling oak around. You can use oak to start a fire in the night though. Do that if you don't want to burn birch or other types of wood. Finding birch, the lightest wood in the game, is good if you want to build a bow. The birch bow has the fastest drawback speed in the game, which makes it pretty powerful. Using birch arrow shafts makes the arrow fly further than all other arrow shafts, making them the best arrow shaft. You need at least a copper axe to cut down birch trees. Walnut trees have good durability, but way more than oak. You need an iron axe or higher to cut down walnut trees. The highest durability wood in the game is tied between ash and redwood. However, redwood weighs less than ash, which is the heaviest wood in the game. So if you have the choice, choose redwood. Both ash and redwood trees 
can only be cut with mithril or better axes. The Groteras in the forest can be ruthless. You should know how to fight oak Groteras from practicing against them in the wooded valley, but increased numbers can prove fatal if not properly accounted for. Different Groteras attack differently. Due to their increased health, it may be wise to avoid higher level Groteras when you are newer to the game. All Groteras drop their appropriate wood types, so if you can't find trees, you can farm these guys. The easiest of the stronger Groteras to take out are Birch and Walnut. Birch attacks in the same way Oak Groteras do, except when they release their spores, they fall much faster and also stun in a large radius. The Walnut Groteras shoot a shotgun volley of about 5 nuts. Their spore attack also releases exploding bombs. For the next two Groteras, I don't recommend fighting them unless you know what you're doing. Ash Groteras stomp on the ground, which sends damaging shockwaves around them. They also release a large amount of explosive bombs around them in their spore attack. Redwood Groteras have a devastating triple vine attack, and are by far the strongest Grotera. Killing these guys can give you a decent amount of Redwood, and is a way of getting it before you have Mithra. There are many oddities you can find in the forest. Aside from the different biomes you can find, there are different structures you can find here as well. One of which is a well. This functions identically to the one in town. The hanging sack is common in the small forest, but also spawns in the normal forest too. Hit it open and it will drop an assortment of leather rolls and cloth bundles. They are often guarded by Groteras, so be careful opening them. Another find can be the cave elevator. Going down this will give you some basic ore. Since the ore you find here is the same as the quarry, it's not worth going down considering the worms that will shoot at you while you try to get down here. You can also find a Turabata dome, which can have an exploding core thingy in the middle. You can blow up the core in the middle by shooting at it with a bow from a safe distance. If you don't really really want to fight the Turabatas, then this place isn't super important. A very rare find in the forest would be the Life Vine Spire. Throwing these berries at the ground will give you 5 bars of health. These structures are very rare. A good structure you can find sometimes is the Hebios Camps. Hebios Camps found in the forest have loot, but also have boxes that can be dug up if you have a shovel. A very important part of the forest are the creatures that inhabit it. Aside from the Groteras, you can find Turabatas, Worms, Spriggles, Dragonflies, Babu, and Dice. Dice prounce around the forest, and they run away from the player if the player gets too close. Killing Dice will drop leather rolls, as well as Dice legs. Killing adult Dice will have about a 10% chance to drop Big Leather. Big Leather is necessary for crafting a Hoarder Bag. Since dice run away from the player, it is recommended to kill them with a ranged attack, bow or air slash. Eating cooked dice leg will give you temporary speed boost. You can cut the leg into 5 meat chunks. Eating these chunks will give you speed, but less so than the full leg. You can use 4 dice legs to make a pretty good speed potion, which weighs a lot less than the legs themselves. Regarding the leather that they drop, you can cut big leather into leather rolls, and leather rolls into leather straps. Be careful not to cut them if you don't mean to. Like dice, Babu can be found in the forest. Unlike dice, Babu can kill you. Babu are normally passive, but if you piss them off, then they will charge you into the ground. Just stay away from them if you don't want the trouble. You can kill them with a sword if you really want to, but I recommend getting up on top of something and shooting them with your bow or just air slashing it to death. 
Babu drops three to four Babu meat sticks, which can be cut up into four slices. Eating Babu meat will give you strength. Bonus fact, you can find vegetables in the forest, and you can use these to cook stews if you want to. There are five skill trees in the game currently. Warrior, archery, woodcutting, mining, and smithing. Skill points are gained through XP. You can gain XP from hitting their respective items. An example of this would be hitting an enemy with a melee weapon. Hitting them will give one experience point. It does not matter what the material of the weapon is or how much damage the strike does. One hit gives one experience. This works for every skill path. Shooting something with a bow, hitting ore with a pickaxe, hitting trees with an axe, and hitting heated metal with a hammer. This means the best way to farm experience is to hit things as many times as you can. To get XP quickly, you can smash flint against a rock for mining XP, smash flint against a tree for woodcutting XP, smash a rock onto uncured heated metal for smithing XP, shoot rusty arrows at Turabatas, or throw rocks at Turabatas for archery XP. Now here's the fun part. You can crouch underneath a worm so that their attacks don't hit you. You can smack them with flint, but they will eventually die, so you'll need to find another worm. Alternatively, you could chisel a few training swords, which do pretty much zero damage, and you can use the same worm for a very long time. Training swords do have durability, though. To see how many skill points you have in all skill trees, walk down to the mountain path and take a right here. You will see the skill shrine. At this shrine, you can see your experience in all trees, as well as see if you have any points you can spend at the shrine. You will know you gain a skill point because a bunch of particles will surround you along with a pretty noise. If you have a point you wish to spend at a shrine, you must go to that specific shrine. Different shrines are found around the world. The warrior shrine is found in the mountain pass. Walk straight and over this log to find the rock trail. Follow it and take a left, then right to go up in this upper area. Continue along the bridge until you reach it. To find the archery shrine, go to the town hall and take a right up the hill and pass these limestone walls. Go through the small tunnel and up the side of the cliff. To find the woodcutting shrine, check if these stairs are built. If they are, go up them. If they're not, walk around past the Hebios camps and up the hill. Across these wooden supports, and you will find the shrine. To get the mining shrine, across this bridge located to the left of the mine. As long as it is built, it should be right here. To find the blacksmith shrine, walk up these stairs from the blacksmith. If the stairs are not here, go down to the Hebios camps, and up the hill, walk down this river route. There should be a bridge here. If the bridge is not built, it is pretty cheap. Walk across the bridge to get to the blacksmith shrine. To equip a skill, grab it and pull. A small tutorial for the skill should appear. Follow the instructions until a blue light surrounds you, indicating you have completed the tutorial. Then go back to the front and pull the skill out again. Hold it above the center and the table to the left. The skill will be added to your character. You can take the skill out by grabbing it and ripping it out. Doing so will return a fraction of the experience. You can hold up to 8 skills on your character at a time. You can see your experience till the next point on this ring, and the line or lines here show how many points you have, if any. One of the most popular skills used for players is Air Slash. Unlock it in the Warrior Skill Shrine with 3 skill points. Hold your weapon above your head and swing down to hit the orb to shoot an energy slash forward. The energy slash damage is dependent on what weapon you use. The drawback is it uses more durability than a normal hit. It is recommended you get this skill as soon as you can. 
To avoid the durability drawback, put a long dagger blade or a wagasashi blade on the end of a throwing dagger handle, which you can find in the Hebios camps. Putting these weapons in a stack, or really any weapon in a stack for that matter, resets their durability, at least at the time of writing. To see what all skills in the game do, I recommend watching these videos by Pink Lemon. Oops, uh, wrong image. <clears throat> you may have noticed some players are able to climb in this game, and it, they really have worked for it. A place of nightmares for all who enter. If you yourself wish to hold the power, beware the climbing tower is something only Bennett Foddy would be proud of. All who have passed, and those who have not, know the horrors of the dreaded fourth checkpoint. Do not do this if you don't plan on spending the next few hours in-game climbing this colossus. If you really want to unlock climbing, understand what you are getting yourself into. That is the best advice I have for you. From the small forest, continue up the path and you will find another small island with Therabatas on it. This wooden bridge will need to be built if not already. Run past onto the other bridge and continue up the trail. Then, you will see it. Be careful around this bridge area, because you can fall off. I recommend teleporting here. Go up to the front of the tower and down these stairs. Hold your hand on the glowing pedestal. Activating the climbing tower will allow you to climb temporarily. Get to the very top of the climbing tower in order to unlock climbing for the rest of the world. Showing a walkthrough of the entire climbing tower will make this video much longer than it already is. So just watch Pink Lemon's guide to the climbing tower. He does a really good job of showing all the routes for the tower. One thing that I recommend before watching his video is please do not use the skip he uses in the video for the first checkpoint. If you have never done the climbing tower before, understanding fundamentals with climbing in the easier environment of the first checkpoint is very important. Skipping this section will probably make the rest of the tower much harder for you to complete for first timers. Bonus fact. You can avoid fall damage by teleporting at the very last second. Just make sure you aren't holding the joystick. This can be unreliable sometimes, so don't fully count on it. This concludes the three-part tutorial about everything you need to know as a new player for a Township Tale. I hope you learned what you need to know. I did not cover some things, like the combat trials, or how to make Hebios molds, and a few other things. If these videos get decently popular, I will make a part 4 covering everything I didn't in these videos, to the best of my ability. If you are familiar with the game already, please give some of your own tips for the game in the comments below. I will be harding all useful information. And for everyone, if you see any new players in the game, help them out. Let other people borrow your tools. The more you help people, the more others will help you. And most importantly, don't steal the cauldrons from the tavern.